tremendous acquisition Nelson Cruz has been for the Orioles. The slugger is second in the American League in home runs and RBIs. And it seems night after night when the Orioles need a big hit, it's Nelly who comes through. Last night in Kansas City, he did it again. The entire Orioles offense came on one swing of the bat, a two-run shot that propelled the Birds to a 2-1 to -one victory. Can he do it again tonight? It's the O's and the Royals. Game two in the four-game series. Find out next on Massa. The Orioles on Masson from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. It's the Orioles and the Royals Friday night baseball. It's game two in this four game series. And hi, everyone. I'm Jim Hunter. Jim Palmer in a moment. The Orioles won a thriller last night, holding off Kansas City and winning it by the final of two to one. And of course, if you're a team with playoff aspirations, winning those close games is critical. Remember 2012, the Orioles excelled in one run victories. They went to the playoffs. Last year, they fell off, did not make the postseason. But so far this year in 2014, they are making up for lost ground. The improvement in the percentage in one run games is staggering. In fact, it's the best in Major League Baseball. 377 the difference from last year to this year. Milwaukee's off to a good start. The Tigers are off to a good start. So are the Marlins and Rays. The Orioles coming into play tonight off their 2 1 win last night, 10 and 3 in one run games. That is the best record in Major League Baseball. And Jim Palmer, when you get in close games, you've been in them 13 times, you feel confident, you figure out, we're going to find a way to win it. Yeah, well, what the Orioles are able to do, Jim, as you know, I mean, uh, you, we were doing our notes and you said, you know, they're back to leading the uh, the American League in fielding percentage. Set the all-time record last year, so they don't beat themselves defensively. You know, they, they lost McLeod, but Lowe can play left field. Cruz gets home runs, and when he plays, he's a more than adequate outfitter. So they're a very good defensive ball club. And then we saw it last night. The Buck Walter obviously, he would like to get uh, more innings from uh, Wei and Chen, but he kept him in the ball game, didn't throw any home runs, and then the bullpen did a marvelous job. So, uh, you know, you're still, we don't know who's going to be closing. Britt came in, got a uh, one, two, three, uh, ninth inning. So they're doing all the little things to win ball games, even though they're not scoring uh, a lot of runs. So anytime you win two to one, especially at this ballpark, the way this team can pitch. Uh, you're really doing something well. Yeah, the bullpen last night excelled. Buck Showalter playing matchups. Darren O'Day, Troy Patton, Ryan Webb, and Zach Britton. They faced 11 batters. They retired all 11 batters. O'Day stranded two in scoring position that might have tied the game. Uh, first one inning save without allowing a base runner this season. And of course, the Orioles with 14 saves. That's the most in the American League. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is if you need 11 outs in your bullpen every night, they're going to wear down. So tonight, Chris Tillman needs to step it up. And he goes against the former Oriole, Jeremy Guthrie. Yeah, I think what happens to have uh, with Chris Tillman is that, uh, you, you know, he's given up to, what, 23 runs, 21 earned runs, 13 of them in the first and second innings. If you go back to his last two starts, three-run home run against Houston, uh, got behind early, uh, pitched very well after that. The same down in uh, Tampa Bay, he gave up a two-run home run to Lauren Goria on an 0-2 pitch. So his problems have been in the first and two innings. Other than that, he's settled down. He's got a little bit of a health problem, uh, but it seems to have worked its way out. Uh, he's their ace. Uh, and, you know, Jeremy Guthrie, well, they have a lot of guys that can really pitch here. We're going to see Shields, who is an outstanding right-hander. But the one thing, Jeremy Guthrie, he's coming off a game, and, and both of these guys have uh, been throwing a lot of home runs. Uh, Jeremy Guthrie threw three run home run, three home runs in his last game. Uh, Tillman's given up eight. So, Jeremy, the one thing about it, he's not as overpowering as he was when he pitched for the Orioles, but the Orioles have never beat him. So tonight it's game two in this four-game series. Birds looking for back-to-back -back wins. And when we come back, we'll chat with Manny Machado, whose bat is heating up.
Bob Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Well, the Orioles are happy to have Manny Machado back manning third base. Manny's bat is starting to come along. He missed the first 24 games of rehabbing for the knee surgery. Outstanding numbers last year, including winning the platinum glove for the best defensive player in the American League. And I spoke with Manny prior to tonight's game and asked him 14 games into his season, how's he feeling? I feel great overall. Um, you know, getting my feet under me, uh, being a part of the team, being here in the clubhouse, uh, you know, finally, fi- finally being out here and just just being able to, uh, you know, participate in everything and and be a, you know, be a team player. Is, uh, it's been great. You know, it's been a uh, ups ups and downs, um, but you know, and it's been an overall great thing to be here and uh, you know, being uniform again. The first few games, especially in Minnesota, you're hitting some tough luck. Uh, hit some line drives right at guys. That may have been some of the adrenaline that came back. And then you cooled off a little bit. Did, did you feel the timing was the big issue as you got back into playing every day? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, timing's everything in this game. Uh, you know, fielding, running bases, uh, even hitting. Uh, you know, and just, just getting back into that, you know, these guys have uh, scouting reports on you, and uh, you, know, you got to make adjustments. And, uh, you know, this game's all about adjustments and, uh, you know, something that, you know, is a long season ahead. And, uh, you know, just keep making adjustments and, uh, you know, balls will fall, and, you know, we'll keep making some plays. The fact that you do have a track record, that has to be helpful for you. You, can't, you don't have to dwell on the fact, wow, am I going to be able to do this? You know you've done it before, so it should come back. Oh, definitely. It's going to come back. You know, uh, the hits are going to come, uh, doubles, homers. You know, that, that's all going to come into play. Um, you know, it's just a matter of when when and where. Um, you know, just, just keep, keep, keep with the same approach you have, um, something that we've been working on. You know, I work on the same things every day, you know, things that work for you and uh, you know, at the end of the day, they are going to come back and, and, and help you in some way. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of just staying strong and, and keep, keep, keep your same approach. The last five days, especially the way you're taking pitches, that tells me you're seeing the ball better. You're, you're not chasing a pitch. You're looking for something, obviously, but the way you're taking it and prolonging at bats, is that right? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I, 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 I feel much better at the plate, um, seeing the ball better. You know, getting that timing finally, um, you know, I've, I've been out of it for a long time. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's taking a little bit to come, but, you know, it's finally finally getting there. And, uh, you know, finally seeing the ball well. So hopefully, uh, you know, it can lead to some good things. Did you have to get your timing back defensively as well? Oh, definitely. That, that's, I think that's still, still one that I'm still working on, just getting that timing uh, you know, it, it, it's different because you got you to put, you know, you got to get back into that mood of looking at the pitcher and at the same time at the bat path coming your way and who's hitting. So it's, it's a lot of things that are coming back. And, uh, you know, something that, you know, you, I just got to stay focused more on, uh, you know, on, on the defensive end and stay focused. It's such a reactionary position that you play. That's got to be difficult trying to do all that timing-wise and watch everything you just described. Exactly. You know, it's it's, it's just a hot corner. You know, and it's not it's not just uh you know just not just the saying that they say it's it's hot, but um, you know, just 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 stay focused and stay uh, stay in every pitch, every moment, and uh, you know, things will work out itself. Well, we appreciate Manny Machado visiting with us, and you can tell by a smile that he's feeling good about things. Time for our train game time temperature. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard, and it is cool. Again, 54 degrees, slight breeze out of the west at 7 at 43%. So game two in this four-game series. Here's the Orioles starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Marquecas Machado and Adam Jones in the number three spot. Last three games, how about six for 13 with a home run and two ribbies? Davis Cruz and Clevenger, Hardy Flaherty, and David Lowe. And take a look at it, Jeremy Guthrie. Uh, fastballs 45, breaking balls, sliders, curveballs. He's added that pitch. Always had it, didn't throw it too often when he was pitching with the Orioles. And then look at that, almost 25% changeup. So, you know, a little different windup uh, than we saw when he was uh, wearing an Oriole uniform. Uh, coming off a game, and it's his worst game where he gave up seven runs, uh, three home runs, all to lefties. So you can look right there, lefties, uh, better average, 10 of the 11 home runs. But then again, 2 and all lifetime against the Orioles with a very low earned run average. And Nick Markakis takes one wide, 1-0. Nick at 302. He is just below the league leaders in batting. He just fell out of the top 10, but he... Snapped out of his 0 for 14 last night, going 3 for 4. There's something about 
playing teams that you've had success against in your career, Jim, where all of a sudden it comes back. I mean, he has been on a tear against the Royals, and last night he gets three base hits. Well, he did it. Uh, two of them were against uh, Ventura, and the other one was against a uh, tough lefty, Tim Collins. So, obviously, you're uh, you're very happy. It's, you know, he's a slashing line drive hitter, which plays in this ballpark because long fly balls, lazy fly balls, they don't work. They go to die here. Unless you uh, maybe you're Nelson Cruz, huge ballpark, uh, much easier to pitch here than to hit. And the two one is low ball three. Yeah, he uh, Jeremy wants that kind of pitch, and you know I was talking to some of the people and uh, the, the the home runs. Kyle Seager, uh, Dustin Ackley hit two, three left, you know three of them all by left-handers, and they were fastballs in up in Seattle. The left field back on it is Gordon. And he runs it down for the out and one away as Marquez is retired. Yeah, take a look at the uh, the Royals defense and it's a good one. Gordon, uh, the, the uh, what fourth assist of the year had 17 last year at the plate throughout Hardy, Dyson, Ioki, Mustakis, who's a very good defensive player, big three run double a couple of days ago, struggling though. Escobar, Gio Vitella, Hosmer, Gold Glover, and then uh, Salvador Perez also a Gold Glove catcher for the first time last season. And here is Manny. You see that batting average is up to 200. And he has worked hard to do that. And he'll take a strike 0 and 1. Manny Jim in his first nine games batted 143. But he's batted 300 in his last five games. And we saw that last night uh, back up the middle. You know, he's really a line drive hitter. 51 doubles last year. All parts of the ballpark. You know, you hang a breaking ball, he'll waffle it down in the corner. You pitch him away. He's got great power, right center, and down the line. With those 51 doubles, countless ones down in the right field corner. Jeffrey, a good fielder. He gloves and two quick outs. Yeah, you run a fastball in and then come back with a good breaking ball. It just seems, and we told you about Jeremy, uh, his numbers 2 and 0 in 19 innings with a 189 ERA with the Orioles. It just. Seems like he makes quality pitches. Much more comfortable here. He's 22 and 17 as a Royal. And loves pitching uh, here at Kauffman Stadium. Yeah, both his wins this year have come at home. He's 0 and 1 in five starts on the road. How about four no decisions on the road? There's Adam Jones, two outs and the base is empty. Jonesy is really heating up. 10 game hitting streak coming into tonight's game. The curveball there, one on one. Yeah, he could uh, get the curveball, the slider, the changeup. We saw a 27% changeup, so he's not very predictable. When he's pitching well, he's got good late life on his fastball, anywhere from 91 to 93. There's another slider, kind of slur. And then what we've seen, the difference uh, than when he had an Oreo uniform is the uh, little Louis Tion, where he'll make a little bit more of a turn from the windup. So as long as you're coordinated, and you mentioned he's a good fielder, he's a very coordinated guy. So you can do that as long as when you swing. Watch him just kind of swing, and he'll you're, he'll see the number if you're a hitter. And then this is with 94. So as long as you don't swing back and over rotate, it can be very deceptive. Harder, a little harder to pick the ball up. A two and two on Jones trying to prolong the inning and get Chris Davis up. Jones is 0 for 8 against Guthrie in his career. And you can see there that again, this is when hitters are going well, takes like that give you an idea of just how well they're seeing it. Well, that and the fact I'm not sure he could get the bat off his shoulder. <laughs> 94 right on the corner, but that's what we see at him. I mean, that's why he's hit 285 or so the, the last two years. Right center field. Chasing it is Aoki. And the right fielder will run it down in deep right center field. And the Orioles go three up and three down. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Chris Tillman goes to work for the Birds.
In tonight from beautiful Dewey Beach, Delaware, all part of Birdland, and it won't be long where folks will be heading there to jump into the ocean and cool off. Here's Kansas City's lineup for tonight. Aoki, Hosper, and Perez with Gordon batting cleanup. Butler drops down to number five. Gia Vitella, Mustakas, Escobar, and Dyson. Escobar, last four games, six out of 14 with a homer and six RBIs. And Chris Tillman uh, trying to win for the fourth time. So there he is, uh, 50 Fifty percent fastballs, fifty-one percent breaking ball. That's a, the big overhand curveball. The changeup up a little bit. So again, uh, just remember uh, the last two starts, two runs in the first inning down in Tampa Bay, and then lights out, and then three runs, uh, two walks, and a home run in his last start. So there are the numbers. And a strike to Aoki. Aoki at two sixty. He is one for his last eleven. Tillman gets ahead, nothing in two. Now, Tillman, of course, uh, there was some question whether he could make this start. He has a, a tight groin on his push off leg. But they uh, had him do his regular bullpen to see if he could use his legs correctly and throw all his pitches, and he got through that fine, so here he is tonight. And we haven't seen the velocity we saw opening day against the Red Sox, and that could have been adrenaline. You know, got the 95 in the first inning. And he doesn't, he, you know, he's so tall. He's he's what what I would call a kind of a tall and fall type of guy. And he almost starts like he's from a stretch position, a little bit more pronounced than it was last year, but very simple wind up. So you can see as he falls off there. You, 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 anytime you fall and go left, it's not where you want to be. But again, it, it's very important for him, and you can see his you know, comes from just a few miles away from from the ballpark in. That is a fair ball right down the line. David Lowe was shading that way. Aoki trying for two, and he's going to make it. The throw is off the bat. That is a tough break for Tillman. Protecting the corner, just slapped it out there for a leadoff double. Well, we saw him. He was late on everything last night, but you know he's going to hit the ball to left. He just, uh, I mean, it's away. He just, this is what he does. He, you talked about all the infield hits. He's got eight of them. Had 140 singles last year for the Brewers. David Lowe gets there very easy. The throw's not very good. I don't think it would have made a whole lot of a difference. And of course, if it gets by Ryan Flaherty, he's going to get all the way to third because nobody was backing up. So let's see. This team has not scored a lot of runs. I mean, they're uh, they've scored 70 runs in 18 games here, so under four runs a game. Well, you would imagine Eric Cosner, who did single to left field, would try to pull the ball here, try to get him to third base or get him in. A high pop up to left. That won't get it done. As David Lowe gets under it, Aoki's going to tag to draw a throw and he stops. And it's big out there for Tillman and one away. Let's take a look at our the Orioles defense brought to you by Chevrolet. Uh, David Lowe, Jones, and Mark Kakis. Jones and uh, Nick out in right field. Gold Glovers. Machado, the platinum gold glove winner. Hardy's one, two. Flaherty, Davis. Steve Clevenger with Matt Weeders on the disabled list uh, with the elbow uh, problems. He'll be behind the plate for the second consecutive night. And they have taken the lead, uh, as you were and I were talking about. 19 errors, best fielding percentage. So not a very good bat by Eric Hosmer. But on the other hand, Chris Tillman made a very nice pitch. Didn't give him a pitch he could pull. So here is Perez, who moves up to the number three spot. Billy Butler is uh, slumping a little bit. And does not have good numbers against Tillman, so he drops down. There's the uh, ERA gym by innings that you were talking about before. The biggest split, the highest ERA in the first three innings of games for Tillman. Line, and Flaherty will get to it. A soft line drive, and even though Ryan was shading up the middle, he got there and two men down. Yeah, the one thing we didn't see in the uh, either in Tampa or in that first inning. Uh, against Houston for Chris was a little cut fastball, and that's what that was. It's like a slider, a cutter, and it backed up a little bit. And I think Perez thought it was going to stay out over the plate, and he jammed himself. So you start looking, and you know we saw Gordon last night. He he got their only hit with runners in scoring position. You start looking first inning, they're struggling for runs. Tillman doesn't wants to get out of that habit of giving up early runs, and you have one of the uh, the best uh, hitters with runners in scoring position for the. Royals coming up. Gordon at 306. 
You know, Tillman and out away from getting out of this. And it's up and away one and oh. Yeah, if you look at Chris Tillman's number, in fact, I might, I, for Oriole fans, Jim, maybe should I, should I avoid it? Actually, what the ERA is. And you are a bastion of information. No, I no, would but not avoid it. 20 runs and 20 innings pitched for an ERA of nine against the Royals. But that was in past years. Right. That's when you have to look at Chris Tillman. He won 16 games last year. And that was as many as he won in his previous four years for the Orioles. You know, a couple of years at two, two, three, and then he came up at like right before the All Star break. July of uh, what, 2012 and went nine and three lights out that year. And if you look at him he's 28 and 12 since he came back up on that I think July 3rd or 4th 2012. Behind Gordon 2 and 0. Oh. And a pop up shallow left center field easy play for David Lowe. And he puts it away and a good comeback for Tillman. Lead off double. Aoki left stranded at second. We head to the second no score. Dell from Salisbury has already won $500 by being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. You can play the Orioles scratch off for the Maryland Lottery for your chance to be a contestant of the game with a trip to see the O's play at Wrigley or to the MLB World Series. Learn more mdlottery.com slash Orioles. John Russell there on the left. He will manage tomorrow when show Walter and Sal. To his daughter's graduation from law school, and there's Matt Weeders staying close to his catching coach. Yeah, talk about Ansi. But as we noted last night, the telecast, he he did uh, warm up Bud Norris, getting ready for his start against the Royals over the weekend. There you go, pretty efficient. Well, until Chris Davis. Starts hitting the high fastball, that's what he's going to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the scouts will say, you know, if you if you feel like you can throw 92, 93, throw it right there. Talking to one scout today, and he said, you know, what happens is if 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 you have a if your front arm is pretty rigid, it's very difficult to get to the ball up and in. I don't care what your arm front arm does, it's that's a tough pitch to hit. But that's the way they're pitching it. I mean, it's not all over the plate. He becomes a very, very dangerous hitter. And then what Ventura could do at 90, what 94 to 99 last night, and what the back end of their bullpen, with the exception of Louis Coleman, they're all really hard throwers. Line drive softly hit right to Giovatello, the second baseman, and one away. Well, here comes Nelson Cruz, and Jim, he is uh, some kind of a tear. Well, he did. I mean, here's the Orioles' runs. Walked to Davis last night, and then the two-run home run. And what? How did Buck Showalter describe it? That's a big old boy home run. 
Not too many guys be able to hit them. I mean, of course, last night the wind was blowing that way, but it was a lot of damp air. But he smoked it. Well, the home run ball has been uh, very beneficial to him. How about this, Jim? The highest percentage of ribbies via home run. Yeah, also, what, almost 30% of his uh, hits are home runs. 29.3. So, well, he, godsend to the Orioles. They sign him late, they get him relatively inexpensive as modern day players go, power hitters. And he's a good guy. Always was. Oh. I, every, I talked to everybody down in Texas when he was playing for them, and they really liked him as, as just as a teammate. The stock is off the bag, but Hosmer keeps his foot on and two away. A little two step. Not exactly in Texas, but here in the Midwest. No goal, Glover. Big target over there. Good pitch by Jeremy Guthrie. He sees Orioles orange and black and all of a sudden becomes about as good as he can be. Well, he spent five years with the birds and the Orioles traded him away. Here's Clevenger. 47 and 65 for Guthrie as an Oriole in those five seasons. He was there when there was some uh, lean years one loss wise. Well he pitched well and lose he pitched. Good and lose sometimes. Sometimes you pitch bad and lose, which is you expect. It's kind of a dichotomy of all kinds of uh, different results. Gave him a lot of innings, but he did play at him when they were in that 14-year stretch of not playing 500 baseball. Woo! Levenger thought about it, checked his swing, and it's in there for a strike. So one and two. Well, in and away, add, subtract. Move your feet. Well, that's such a great way to pitch. You don't have to throw at people up and in. A lot of guys don't get out of the way. They just kind of roll that front shoulder, but down, they move there. They don't want to get hit in the ankles or the knees. Then you go away right there for the changeup. Well, Clevenger down on strikes. And Guthrie has back to back three up three down innings. Mid second, time for a snack in KC. To Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. There's still in a leadoff double, but no runs in the first. Needed only 12 pitches to get through that first inning. And here's a look, Jim, at our Jeep inside the numbers. Oh, there you go. And uh, pretty good company right there. Price is everywhere. Cranky, $150 million contract shares have turned down. 144 won the Cy Young. Chris Tillman going along. Awakuma finally back. He had the finger injury, uh, so he was a little bit of a late starter, but really good pitcher uh, for the Mariners. A nice company to be in. Boy, he's come a long way. 
35 big league wins for Tillman. Here's Butler. And there's a strike. Butler one out of his last 10. He's at 232, but he's batting 302 here at home. Breaking ball for a strike. And a little slider. Always going on. I didn't know he had that. Doesn't throw that very often. He doesn't. I have a new definition for a waste pitch. Totally wasted. I mean, he just, just, you know, he just didn't, couldn't quite get into rhythm of what he wanted to do, and had no conviction in that. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes you come up to your wind up and yeah, you want to throw it off the corner, but you open up too much and you throw it ended up five feet away from the plate. I fly ball shallow right. Cake is in on it. And one away here in the Kansas City second. Well, fans, you could celebrate your summer at Oriel Park by picking up the new Birdland Summer Six Pack. You'll get a ticket to six games of your choice throughout the season. And savings up to 20% off the cost of single game tickets. You can lock in your seats now for the best games and promotions of the summer, and you save. For all the details, Orioles.com slash six pack or just call 888 848 Bird. Those fans here in Kansas City taking advantage of the birds being in town. Johnny Giavatella, and there's a strike. And what uh, one of the things that Chris Tillman, and this is one of the keys to pitching, and he does so well, as does Jeremy Guthrie, is what do you do to the first batter you face in an inning? I mean, he's at 82%, and that number now goes down a little bit because of the Aoki ground ball over the bag. But that's a good way to pitch. If you're somehow able, as he went to Butler, to get the out. Jeremy Guthrie at 73%. So those are plus numbers in those categories. Yeah, Tillman, 7 for 49. The leadoff batters and in innings are against him. There's a ground ball towards the middle. Hardy can't get it. Wow, that grass is fast. Well, I think that's the equalizer. You just watch one game as we did last night. and. I mean, you really got to hit a ball to get it out of here. The wind blowing across the field last night, the, the ball that Valencia hit, probably would have been a grand slam home run, but the wind kept it in. But right here, every ground ball last night, it's very good if you hit it at your infielders because it's easier to turn double plays, as we saw. But if it's hit hard and up the middle or in the hole, it's getting into the outfield. Here's Mike Moustakis, who did not play in the game last night. He'll take a strike. Mustakis is really scuffling. 161. He's got four home runs, 17 RBIs. He's batting 200 in the month of May. And he's batting 163 since April 24th. Just seven for his last 43. But he did get the big hit the day before yesterday. Center field, Adam Jones. And he's there for the out and two down here in the second inning. Fans, you can win a meet and greet with Buck Showalter from Masson. Just text Masson's word of the day, which is stretch to 29292 for your chance to win. That's stretch to 29292. That's Weeders is tall. Tillman is tall. It's your nickname in high school. Stretch. You're no, tall. Not, not, not yours. Not, no. <laughs> not even going there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, I, you know, you're tall. I'm on you're... one of those days. I'm, I'm going to apologize right now. <laughs> That's fine. No, no, no. Hey, good I, spirit. We I, had a good time I, before the game. I know I got the five eight and stopped. It's well documented. And we, as well, duly noted, duly noted last night. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been five eight years. Escobar cues it foul. Escobar's got a four game hitting streak going. The ground ball single uh, last night. Grand slam earlier last week or over the weekend up in Seattle. And off to a good start two years ago. I mean, it hit 293 last year. It dropped into the high 230 range. Mike 
Nice block by Clevenger. Yeah, really nice. Uh, very easy to let that ball get by you. And if you're an overhand curveball pitcher, as I was and Chris Tillman is, it's nice to have a catcher that going to give up their body to keep that ball in front of them. You don't want to hang it because that speeds up the bat. They play in the right field, so any ball down in the left field corner might score two as big as this park is. Bounce to third. There's Machado. Plays the hop, gets it across, and Tillman strands another. So a base hit in the man left for two in Kansas City. Ozum Royals, no score. Uh, gets leadoff double and then gets out of harm's way in the first. So let's take a look at the Orioles' struggling offense. The the first 26 games, everything's going pretty well. I mean, you're scoring 4.6 runs a game, which is what they scored in 2013 when they led the league in in home runs. And then all of a sudden it drops because the batting average goes down with runners in scoring position. Batting average goes down. Period. On base percentage, they don't walk a whole lot. They're 15th in walks out of 15 teams. And all of a sudden, even though you hit more home runs, your overall offense, because you're usually hitting home runs and nobody's on, not a good thing. Well, unless you're pitching for the other team, right? And you're very pleased about that. Yeah, the Orioles have the fewest walks in all of Major League Baseball. J.J. Hardy, Flaherty, and Low for the Birds. And you wonder if that's just the fact that. You're, you're seeing a lot of good pitching, or you have a lot of guys like JJ at the plate who hit what, 25 home runs last year, 22 the year before, 30 the year before, and all of a sudden uh, back problems. So he gets off to a, where he misses some games and he's not hitting home runs. Is he trying to hit home runs? Chris Davis leads the league. You just don't know if it's a combination, and I guess the way we'll find out is you play 162 games. Just off the plate, two and two. Well, JJ's got a two game hitting streak going. And he has 10 hits in his last nine games. Line drive center field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. So JJ's on with the Orioles' first base hit. And a leadoff single. Now, Jim, our Jeep inside the numbers, and how about those long balls? Well, there you, there you have it. I mean, Tillman throws a lot of solos. Last year he threw 33, 24 Camden Yards, home run Haven, nine on the road. Dickey plays in Toronto. CC Sabathia has lost his fastball to the what compared to the way he is. And then Bronson Arroy, he played uh, last year in Cincinnati for most of the year, and that is a band box. But now Guthrie, even when you look at Jeremy, most of the home runs were more so on the road. Here it's he was very, very good, and uh, he was able to keep the ball in the ballpark. Something that Ryan Flaherty would like to change here. Center field. Gerard Dyson goes back on it. Hardy's going to tag to draw a throw. JJ goes about 30 feet and then puts on the brakes. 
And we find out about somebody's arm by doing that. Perfect throw by Garrett Dyson. Wow. Uh, one away here in the third. The Orioles are back in town. It all starts uh, Thursday to begin a four-game weekend homestand against the Indians. And on Friday, don't miss the season's next fireworks night. All fans enjoy a beautiful fireworks display following the game at 7.05. So come on out and celebrate summer at Oriole Park. For tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. David Lowe now. Yeah, and they play him really shallow at third because he was a royal last year, so they know he can bunt. Stockus was in on the grass. Now he comes over and says something to Guthrie. Well, oh, he may say, I'm going to move back a step or two. And as we mentioned in the first inning, and Jeremy Guthrie, very, very cat like, very good fielding pitcher. So he does move back a step or two. David at 167. He was 0 for 4 in the game last night. This guy's at the shallow left center field. There's Alex Gordon. And two down. So David Lowe continues to have troubles keeping the ball on the line or on the ground. And that was just a look like a hanging change up in the middle of the plate. He just if the bat loops, boy, it, it sounds like it's so elementary. Point A to point B, bat head. Being the uh, point A and the ball being point B, but it's hard. And if you loop the bat a little bit or you drop your backside, and you get that little loop in your swing, and very difficult to, to center balls as they talk about. Marquecas takes strike one. Nick now with 1,419 hits. So he is within seven of tying Paul Blair for eighth all time in Orioles history with base hits. Left center field, chasing Gordon, chasing Dyson way out there, and Dyson gets to it and makes the catch. Gordon ducks out of the way just at the last moment. A leadoff single, a man left, middle of the third. Bows and Royals are scoreless. Passing is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Union Station in downtown Kansas City. Fountain out in front of the station there. This is the city of fountains everywhere. And now is that an official title or is it just one that you well I observe you everywhere it. I go I see a fountain you coined it like three coins in the fountain or something like that but you coined it as the city of fountains I like that strike one to Dyson Aoki and Hosmer will follow speedster I'm gonna keep him off base if you can even though uh, they have not attempted a steal against Chris Tillman good curveball And 
a little pop up to short. And Hardy's got it for the out and one away. Here's our Antwerp in quote of the day. Chris Tillman early on, outstanding fastball command as of late, not so much. And we asked him, well, how does that happen? It's pitching. You know, that's part of the game. I think every every pitcher goes through it. And, you know, it's frustrating. It's it's confusing. But <laughs> I think we've all been there before. And we know we know what we need to do to get back. So I think uh, we got a good good group of catchers here that they know me, pitching coaches. I know myself got a lot of pitchers that like to help. So, um, you know, we got a good group of guys here that, you know, it's – Makes it a lot easier on you. And then you get healthy. That's one of the keys. A little bit of a groin issue. Push off leg, the right leg. And try to pitch through it. Right. The Antwerp and quote of the day visit our new Route 32 Clarksville facility. All month will beat any competing offer on your trade in. Hurry in today to Antwerp. Bouncer down the line and foul. The well, Oki trying it again. Opposition of the ball. I mean, if you throw it away, and Manny Machado was just standing on third, he probably should play right there. Might think about I mean, Low is playing him way across. Now everybody's going to move over a little bit. But except Manny goes back to where he maybe a higher percentage. Tillman falls behind three and one. Aoki last year led the National League in singles. He had 140 of them. Trying to go that way again. Fouls it off. Pretty much like Ichiro when he hits, where his legs are moving all over the place as he swings. Yeah, he has. Oh, he's a number of batting titles. Hit over 300. You know, seven straight years in Japan, and then 10 straight years here in the United States. But. Wave it low towards foul ground. He gets there for the out. Had him play perfectly. And one away or two away here in the third. Well, Jim, you were talking about Chris Tillman, Holman Road. Here's the breakdowns for this season. So again on the road, the ERA, and it, I mean I think the important thing is if you look at the run support, 21 runs, and then wouldn't really matter at home. He's pitched well. They haven't scored. That's the story of until last night. The Orioles have been averaging about three runs a game at home and 5.15 on the road. But it's certainly early season, right about what a quarter of the way through. Osmer flied out his first at bat. Now one for his last 13. Now his was a crucial at bat after the double by Aoki leading off the game. Did not get him over. Bounced to Hardy, who was right there. And Tillman has his first three up, three down innings. So the pitchers dual developing here in Kansas City. O's come to bat in the fourth. No score. Coming schedule from routine to the most specialized eye care, LifeBridge Healthcare's Krieger Eye Institute handles it all. Call 410 601 2020 for a same day appointment. Night game tomorrow night, but an hour earlier. 
And then a day game on Sunday to close it out. The Orioles then will head to Pittsburgh Sunday night, enjoy a day off on Monday, and then two interleague games, night games Tuesday and Wednesday, before heading back home for a four-game homestand that gets going next Thursday night with a night game against the Indians. So the pitchers are looking forward to Pittsburgh because they get to bat. But Norris was in the batting cage today working on his bunting because he's not pitching in that series. So he might be available for Buck Showalter being a former National League pitcher if a bunt is needed. There's Manny Machado. Rip foul. He was all over. Ooh. Get out of the way. The ball person. Manny had a comebacker to Guthrie his first at bat. Well, there's the fastball, and he got it in and up where, but not to break your bat, you have to get the bat head out. Ground ball back to Jeremy Guthrie was just a typical slider, a good one down and away. Fastball in here. So we've seen it, when you look at his numbers, the average fastball has been 91, but he's hit 94 on a couple of occasions. One gets a pass, Guthrie, go to first, not in time, and it gets away. Pass Osmond. And Machado's going to try for second, and the throw is not in time. Well, outstanding hustle by Machado. Caught Guthrie by surprise and got it past him just enough where Guthrie couldn't feel the cleanly. Well, it, you know, you did the interview with Manny. He was saying, I'm starting to feel good, so he's running, and it's almost like you're next door at Kansas City Chiefs to fumble recovery, and then. He throws it away and uh, you're trying to get some runs going He's running well. And here's the important thing. Look at him cut. So coming off the patellar injury motors into second base on the error by Guthrie. So a bunt single goes to second on the error. And the Orioles now with a chance to get on the board. Here's Adam Jones. Lays off the slider 1 0. So Manny now has seven hits in his last 22 at bats. Talking to Gia Vitella out there. And yeah, both of them have hits. They're happy. Yeah, I'm fast. I'm fast. Well, he he did run very well. Good slider. Never pick it up. And I think the catcher may have been crossed up. <laughs> they immediately requested the ties. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Guthrie, good I pitch, but uh, that wasn't what I called. Well, I don't think if he'd been crossed up, he probably wouldn't have caught it. Or but maybe if you're a gold glover, you, you catch anything they throw up there. But runners in scoring position numbers. Adam has nine RBI so far in the month of May. The knees look like Adam thought it was low. The Kansas City starters have been outstanding as a group. I mean, they're, they're starting ERA as a staff, third best in the league. I mean, they eat up a lot of innings. They did add a seventh reliever today, so they now have an extra arm just in case. And that gets by Perez and Machado's going to go to third right through his legs. Yeah, that's a ball. It's going to be a wild pitch, but if you're a gold glover, let's see. It just looks like he just gets the glove down and he goes up. Boy, what do infielders tell you? Always stay below the hop. Catchers are the same way. And he goes up, ball goes right through his legs. Not a very good job of shoveling. Not an easy play, but. Sure, Rick Dempsey sitting in our studio going, Boy, you got to keep that ball in front of you, and you do. Matt Weeder's saying the same thing over in the Oriole bench. Bouncer to short. Machado has to stay at third as Escobar gets it to first. The Jones bounces out one away. Well, they bring the infield in because Jeremy Guthrie can throw uh, ground balls, and then he makes a great pitch. Adam trying to fight off the fastball in on his fist, unable to do it. But Guthrie gets the first out. Machado stays at third, and now Chris Davis will bat with the infield in. 
Davis runners in scoring position very good numbers 357 average. And to keep that infield in about almost 50 50 ground ball fly balls this year. Now all of a sudden and the scene has been set the way they're pitching Chris Davis and it's not only here it's just if if you throw over 92 and you can elevate the ball and you have good command they're going to see if he can hit the ball up in the zone. And then if you're the starter or the pitcher you hope you don't miss. Well but you're missing the happy zone. Yeah. <laughs> That was Guthrie's struggles with the Orioles, where he would miss in the strike zone. And there's a changeup. When you know the fastball speeds up the bat, and the changeup slows it down. And he's done a really nice. He you know he struck out Clevenger for his only strikeout by doing that fastball, curveball, and then great changeup down of the way. Press, pressure's on, Jeremy. Fly ball will get your first run in. And he lays off. Good take there. But Chris is three for 19 with eight strikeouts since coming off the DL. So it could be he's going through what Manny went through, trying to find that timing again, even though he did play earlier this year. Well, just watch his front foot. See if he's able to get it down, let the ball travel. And it looks like he's just a little bit late. And there's such a rhythm. Hands go back, foot gets down. And you can see the uppercut swing. So. If you have, if the bat loops and you have a little bit of an uppercut swing and the ball's up, it's just hard to get on top. Doesn't mean you can't do it. We've seen him countless times be able to do that. Another strategy meeting on the mound. Twice now, Mustakis has gone in there. This time, Perez joined him. The Orioles have really struggled in the last 13 games in these situations with the runners in scoring position. Batting a 179 flip in the past 13 but games. But you don't even have to get a hit here. I mean, right. Yeah, so I, as you know, I'm impressively saying just hope he's able to fight something off. You know, big, strong guy. Pretty good throw in outfield, though. Another good take. And again, he's staying up there with the fastball. You know what his intentions are. The amazing thing is, three runs or less, 11 out of the last 18 games for the Orioles, but their record is 10 and 8 in those 18 games. So that tells you they've been pitching pretty well. 3 2 call ball four, and Guthrie can't believe it. And Doug Eddings rips the mask off because Guthrie showed him up. Yeah, he really does. And in the opinion of the umpire, it went inside around the plate. And he's telling him it's in, of course, our rectangular strike zone. It says otherwise. The only guy that matters, though, is Doug Eddie. It usually doesn't earn you any. Uh, any close close. Close. Yeah. Right. But I certainly understand the feeling because what are you trying to do if you're Jeremy Guthrie? You're trying to strike him out, and I think he felt he had. So now, now go back into double play position. And here is Nelson Cruz, runners on the corners and one down. Nelson's got a three game hitting streak going. Chato at third and Davis at first with one down. Bird's trying to strike first. Each team with two hits. Last night the Orioles had 10 hits. Bouncer over the head of Hosmer and in the right field for a base hit. Machado scores and Davis goes all the way to third. How about that? When you're hot, you're hot. And another RBI for Nelson Cruz. Birds take a one nothing lead. Well, when you're not scoring a lot of runs and you're Ned Yost, you play your infield in uh, at third and first. And then you have the hard infield. Big ballpark, hard infield. Actually, I mean, he just fights it off and it just bounces it over. Over the head, you can see Hosmer playing a step in front of the bag. If you had a lead, he would have been back, probably would have been a double play ball. As it turns out now, you get a run in, you get first and third, and now you're hoping Steve Clevenger can do something. Certainly not any blame on that. Yes, you just play the game that way. 
just trying to cut off runs because you're not scoring very many. The Cruz picks up his 36th RBI and here's Clevenger. So Guthrie's got to be thinking what else can go wrong. I thought I had him struck out the pitch stayed inside. Then Cruz is late on the swing and he hits a Baltimore chop in the right field for a single. Around the foul behind Wayne Kirby. And now you have a chance to add another run or two. Levenger's been hot. He's had a 400 clip in his last five games. Now the only thing he doesn't do or hasn't done well with the bat is runners in scoring position number. I know you're looking at your card. He's one for 14. Double machine with eight of them. 300 hitter at Camden Yards. And that good a hitter there. And he gets him to chase ball two. So now he's in a position where. If you're Jeremy Guthrie and we've seen him pitch often enough, he's he's hunting strikeout here. He's still going back to the fumble, the fumble recovery on the bunt that, <laughs> that he couldn't come up with and then threw it away. Yeah, that might have been better off in retrospect just to hold the baseball because he he couldn't get to it before it got by him. He smothered it, but it was already by him. One and two on Clevenger, runners at first and third, and one down. And a bouncer towards second. Giovatella to Escobar and back to first. Safe at first base, and the Orioles get a run. Oh, a big you. bouncer, just enough for Clevenger to beat it out. Yeah, and Escobar comes and gets it uh, as about as quickly as you can. Giovatella, I mean, it's a high hopper, so it takes a while to get to him, and then bang, bang, and very, very close. Foot gets down before the glove get in Hosmer's glove, and he's looking right at the first base umpire, Chris Siegel. And the Orioles get their second run. And J.J. Hardy takes a strike. And the Orioles break out here with two in the inning. But too far, 0 and 2. So Clevenger hustling down the line and that made the play the big bouncer but he broke it out of the box picks up an RBI a seventh and gives the Orioles a two nothing lead. And Hardy goes down on strikes and that will end the inning. But the Orioles do get two as Cruz and Clevenger pick up the ribbies mid fourth two nothing O's. And you and Steve Lombardozzi, Jim was with the O's early this year, and he is swinging the bat really well for the Tigers. Well, he swung the bat really well. I mean, for the uh, for the Orioles, look at the 292. He can get some doubles, switch hitter. He can play third. He can play second. You can see he's playing in the outfield. So, pretty impressive player. A local boy. We saw him when he played for the Nationals, and a lifetime batting average of 264. 
you would imagine you'll probably see him back at this level at some time this this year. And he is not in the Norfolk lineup tonight. Mm. Well, there you go. A lot of fastballs, and why not? He's had a good one. Salvador Perez, the number three hitter, Gordon and Butler will follow. And a strike at the knees. And for a second straight game, the Orioles scored two in the fourth. And Cruz, last night he had both RBIs in the home run. Tonight he has one on the bouncer. And the Royals now, what, uh, one for eight in this series of runners in scoring position. I fly ball, shallow left field. David Lowe's going to move in on it. And one away here in the fourth. It's now time for all fans to tweet their photo using hashtag Masson Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast brought to you by AT&T. We got to get the Hall of Famer on Twitter. No, no, no. I leave at, that. I leave that for other people. At Cakes 22. And then you can tweet your photos. I just oh well. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think people want to know. I mean. May not even know want to know what I think now, but if they're going to have to hear it, why would I want to burden them with even more? Isn't that what Twitter's about? Well, it's not a burden; it's a sharing of information. No. Oriole fans would love to hear from you. <laughs> do you do you tweet? No, do you tweet? Yes, I do. Hmm. Not during the game. I'm busy. But, you know, I did before the game. Sent out a nice picture of Manny to let everyone know they could hear from him. Yeah, send out sometimes pictures of Big Seedy. Well, there you go. That was uh, pretty routine. Get ahead. And then just right up the ladder. He makes 88 because of his deception. Big guy at 6'5, a little hesitation. Perfect pitch. Don't think he's doing this by himself. Steve Clevenger really does a nice job of presenting the target to the umpire, calling the pitches. Chris, that's a team event, as Chris Tillman told you. Caleb Joseph is going to catch tomorrow. High fly ball, right center field. Jones on the run. Way out there on the warning track, he runs it down. So Billy Butler gives it a ride. First ball swinging. And Chris Tillman has another three up, three down inning. He's retired six in a row. We'll head to the fifth, the O's in front. Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. And by Luna. For beautiful new carpet, hardwood, and laminate, call 877-241-LUNA. Lovely view of the K, Kauffman Stadium, right next to the A, Arrowhead Stadium, in the Truman Complex. Well, they were one of the uh, first teams, may have been the first team to actually have 
two stadiums uh, next door to each other. I mean, going all the way back, this stadium was probably in the early the early 70s, I believe. In fact, the Orioles uh, to go to the first World Series at the old ballpark down by Union Station. You saw uh, Metropolitan Stadium down here. That's where we clinched the. Uh, our, you know, back then you didn't have the division or the championship. Right. So when we when Russ Snyder made a diving play with me on the mound, one of my few complete games when I was 20, and we ended up winning, we knew we were going to play somebody in the World Series, and it turns out it was the Dodgers, and that went well. Yeah, I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> See, the Dodgers forgot in that series that in order to win, you have to score. That had something to do with you guys. And they scored the first inning. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny because we we drafted Mo Drabowski out of the Kansas City Royals, actually the Kansas City A's uh, farm, farm team, and uh, I mean Mo for twenty five thousand dollars is one of the best acquisitions ever for the Orioles. I mean we made a lot of great trades over the years, but for the waiver price, struck out eleven Dodgers, six and two thirds innings. I was pitching the next day, and I. Even at 20, I could pay attention. I'm saying, a little trouble with that high fastball. And he really could pitch. Big, big difference. What a great guy Mo Drabowski was. You know, it's interesting how you just phrase that. As Flaherty swings at the 1 2 and the high fly ball to center field. This will be an easy play for Dyson. And one away. When I chatted with Chris Tillman yesterday, he was talking about the competition. Within the five that are in the rotation, a friendly competition, they, they want to try to you know do a little better than each. And he said one thing he's noticing this year, more so than any of this time in the big leagues, is that the pitchers when they're not starting are watching the game to see, hey, how's Tilly getting this guy out? Or what about this? What about that? How can I take that to my start? And he noticed it because the other four days he's on the bench, he's one of those guys doing it. Well, what you try to do is you sit with the other pitchers. David Lowe, left field. Back out it is Aoki on the warning track at the wall. He's going to make the catch. Well, welcome to uh, Decay, as you put it, Kauffman Stadium. Home run in Baltimore. Butler's ball probably would have been a home run. Here it's just a can of corn. If you have mobile outfielders, and Aoki can certainly go get them. Dyson, we've seen. Gordon wins gold gloves. They run them down. But you're right. But not only do you are you talking and sitting with other pitchers, you're talking with utility infielders and outfielders. You know, we used to get Kurt Moten, we used to get Chico Simone, you'd get Davey May, sit in the corner, Terry Crowley, Merv Redman, guys that would go on to be batting instructors. And you just learn about the game, you pay attention. And it's uh, it just prepares you when you get to play, I think it makes you a little bit better. Yeah, and you add, uh, you know, a fierce competitor like Bud Norris, and you add uh, Ubaldo, and now you're on to something. Guthrie's about to have a three up, three down inning as Marcakis grounds out. So the Orioles go in order in the fifth. Tillman goes back to work, 2 nothing O's.
five. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, receive an Orioles ripcord bracelet. You can celebrate Memorial Day weekend with this fun new promotional item, proudly made in the USA. So come on out and create some of those new Birdland memories during this, the 60th anniversary season of your Orioles. For your tickets, just visit Orioles.com or call 888-848-BIRD. Showalter and the O's trying to make it back-to-back -back wins here. Yeah, they uh, came here last uh, year for four games. Won the first one, then lost the next three. So don't think Buck did forget that. <laughs> Pedal to the metal, if you can. Buck has a theory that by around June the first, or that first week of June, the teams that are going to do something usually begin to separate. From the others. And the Orioles were playing good baseball until they ran into the Tigers and got swept. The Bucks team still in first place, and they really feel their baseball is still in front because they feel the pitching can get more consistent and the hitting has really not done what they believe it's capable of doing. And you're, you're missing your gold glove catcher. But in fairness to uh, both Caleb Joseph and Steve Clevenger, who's done more of the catching, and a real nice job. They have. Yeah. And it's all about depth. These guys are going to get hurt. Go back to 2012. Red Sox had 26 guys on the DL. Last year it was the Yankees' turn. You know, the Rays, when they lose Longoria, they don't play very well. He was healthy last year. They won over 90 games for five out of six years. Well, and these guys, they're, they're really embracing this opportunity. There's Caleb. He'll catch tomorrow night's game. When, when I was down in the, the dugout before the game waiting for Manny, I was just standing there and Caleb brought out his equipment bag and I was like Caleb you're in the big leagues now don't you have people that do that for you he says oh no you guard this stuff. <laughs> well, it's like a golf pro with yeah. you know if his caddy's not taking care of his bag he is. AJ Hardy. Low throw scoop by Davis on the back end what a play. Yeah Gia Vitella he doesn't like to hit ground balls at uh, JJ Hardy because he flips the bag. He's not happy he's not happy about the second strike another curve ball. And then it's nice to have a nice guy with good hands. And he's able to pretty much make it easy. Well, that goes back to last year in spring training, those early days with Bobby Dickerson hitting him fungos in the dirt so he could practice those scoops. Now he's one of the best fielders in the game and he has the confidence to back it. Breaking ball bounces, Mustakis takes ball one. Yeah, you. you even though you get guys out, and the first time Mike Mustakas came up, he hit a, uh, I mean, a rocket right at Adam Jones. If it's either to his right or left, it would have been a double. So you keep that in the back of your mind. Throws him back to back curveballs and bounces him. Chris Tillman has a plus curveball from a standpoint of the quality of the way the ball breaks, but pitch percentage, it's a on a good day, he might get 60% over. On the year, about 40, 47%. That's the high strike. The stock is uh, trying to make sure the ball was down in his zone. Well, the book on him is that he he's much better hitter out over the plate, and when he struggles, they're going to go right where Clevenger's glove is inside, and he does, and he doesn't get the call. But now he can hit on his terms. Tillman's got a two run lead. He's going to throw him a strike here. At least that will be his intention. And the shift is on against them. Machado at short and Hardy on the other side of the bag. Mustakis uh, has sort of made peace with the media. He uh, didn't want to talk to them the other day when he had the game winning hit. Because there were some stories about maybe he needs to go back to Triple Oh, every other day. Yeah. I mean, Dayton Moore, the, the you know the GM said, "Hey, we don't have an alternative." Ned Yost said, "You know, I'm with him. There's a ball, and he does the only thing he can do, which is when he puts the uniform on, he just tries to go up. I mean, he's a very good defensive player, so he certainly never hurts their defense. Had a very good spring. Has some power." But when, uh, as you mentioned, when you're hitting 161 with 147 with runners in scoring position, he's not happy, nor are the critics or the pundits. And there is one writer that keeps saying that the best thing for the Royals is that he should be in Omaha. Right. 
Here's a CD's Escobar. Tillman had retired nine in a row before that walk. So you know what it wasn't too long ago Jim when. That person you're describing was Alex Gordon. And he actually went back to AAA, and there were some thoughts that maybe the Royals were going to give up on him the former number one pick and they didn't. He converted to the outfield. And now he's a star. Because he learned how to play and he learned himself. It's going to be tough to turn two. Escobar can run. And Flaherty doesn't even bother. He gets the lead runner on the throw from Hardy and two down. Well, you did the interview with Manny Machado, and uh, there is a certain uh, timing and, and, and rhythm to playing defense or hitting. And right there, the rhythm to that is that you have a gold glove shortstop nose, the ball off the bat with Escobar ability to run, that you're only going to get one. So you catch the ball. You, you don't hurry and rush it to try to get two when you have no way of doing it and you get the lead runner. And then you make Chris Tillman a better pitcher and he's happy and now he's going to. Make his pitches to, to Dyson and try to get out of the inning. And a fastball for a strike. Dyson popped up the shortest first at bat. And ran a fastball right in on his fist. Just inside one and one. One and one the count. In the dirt knocked down by Clevenger. Uh, the yeah. wild pitch. Well, you're right, and uh, that's the something that Perez couldn't do. After the error by Guthrie that allowed Manny Machado on the bunt to get to second base, they didn't have to move him over because uh, Perez couldn't block it. I mean, this ball easily is that it's probably about 59 feet could have gotten behind it. And then you also have a very speedy runner, 11 out of 12 stolen bases, and he couldn't advance. They are looking for offense. The amazing thing about Chris Tillman is for a big guy, he holds runners. Extremely well. They've had not even attempted right. a steal. And the Orioles have had struggles overall. There have been 29 stolen bases against the Birds on the year, but not a one with Tillman on the mound. You would think he'd be running here. It is not. And it's grounded past Machado. It was wide of the bag. So Dyson just slaps it the other way. And that'll turn the lineup over. So a walk and now a two out hit, two on with two down. You know, this is what he does. I mean, 213 at bats last year because of an ankle injury. And boy, he stays right behind that. I mean, it's a fastball that's up a little bit, didn't get it in. Just kind of serves it by the third baseman, Manny Machado. 34 steals last year. That's only six times, so he can really run down at first base. A lot of speed on the bases for the Royals. Well, here's Nori Aoki who doubled on a ground ball right down the third base line and and flied out to David Lowe in left field in foul territory. First time in the game Kansas City set two men on in the same inning. And fastball for a strike another high pitch. Yeah, he ducked it and Doug Eddings called it a strike. Like the old days right there at the letters. Marcakis is shallow and right and low, shallow and left. The slap hitter up there. That's out with the breaking ball. Truman very pitch efficient as he works here in the fifth inning. However, this will be the 20th pitch this inning. He's at 44 coming into this inning. It's his first five batter inning. Slap foul. Yeah, so, yeah, we've seen uh, most of them 89, 90, 92 as that one on occasion. So a little extra. Chris Tillman um, just 
He just has an edge. You like that edge. He's got an edge that he doesn't like to give up runs. Very competitive guy. I mean, easy going until you give him the ball and say, try to get a hitter out. There's a controlled intensity that you like in pitchers. And a high chopper. Tillman has it. And he'll get it the first just in time ahead of Aoki. Wow. Tillman lobbed it over and Aoki hustled down the line. So Tillman gets out of it. A walk, a hit, and two left. O's do ups brought to you by Mazda, Machado, Jones, and Davis as we head to the sixth. Get on to O'sBirdsNest.com and enter tonight's bonus code EARL. Before midnight, you'll receive two bonus tokens to be entered to win a monthly prize of an autographed player photo or a year-end prize of two tickets to 2015 opening day. Join the O's Bird's Nest today and start being rewarded. Social media has its benefits, and those O's fans have their hoodies and the scarves and sending things out on Twitter. Can you just text? We well, can't text to people that you don't know the numbers. Chato first ball swing pops it up. Here's Gia Batello. And he's got it for the out. One pitch, one away. So Manny was guessing and popped it up. And so now four straight uh, since Jeremy Guthrie gives up a couple of runs in the fourth inning. Not that he got hit very hard in the fourth. So all you can do, you, you know, you go out there. I guess in the old days when figured well you're not going to give up any runs so you give up a run give up one you're not going to give up two until you give up two but you hang around and you give up runs early you try to slam the door which is what he's trying to do and hope that your team get some runs for you. Inside corner called strike against Adam Jones. Down and away. Adam has his uh, hitting streak on the line. He's hit 10 straight. He was in a great mood today. He's always in a good yeah, mood. He, he was laughing and hey, Rockfish, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josie, everything's good. <laughs> yeah, apparently, uh, I got my report from my uh, my baseball expert out on the West Coast, Ted Grossman, the stunt man well, the stunt guy, He yeah. said, yeah, he said, I was watching Jim Rohn. He said, well, I really wasn't watching Jim Rohn because I don't like to watch Jim Rohn, but I like to see the people that are on, and I guess Adam was on there, and he said he was terrific. Well, that's that's the kind of show that's good for Adam. Yeah. He said he said he was uh, quite a character. That's the way Teddy described him. Ooh. Hello. Which Adam said, I, yeah, I tell it like it is. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> and that's what you love about it. This guy's the leader of your team. There are several leaders. Adams right there. 
Chopper toward short. Escobar's got to hurry. He won't be able to make a play as he goes underneath his hand. Well, there's your hitting streak alive. And if so, that'll be his 12th infield hit, and it is a base hit. Yeah, good curveball. I mean, this is about the perfect one. This is exactly the way you want him to hit it. Except you want him to hit it maybe a little bit harder. I mean, perfect curveball down and away, hits it with one hand, rolls over it, and the Orioles get a base run. So Adam Jones, 33 home runs, 108 RBIs last year, and he's leading the league in infield hits. That's his 12th. Speed an asset as well. And there's Chris Davis with Jones on him, one down. Well, you get a feeling that Jeremy, uh, as the pitch count mounts, is is maybe not going to be able to ride the ball up in the zone. And that's when uh, it's a long way to the waterfalls here in Kansas City. But the guy that can hit him is Chris Davis. Well, see, and that that's the dilemma because here. The way he's trying to get his timing back, base runners are at a premium. Why not push a bunt? They're not playing there. Get a couple of guys on with one down. But a home run is always a threat, so that's why that weapon isn't there or isn't utilized. Yeah, I think that it, it, I think everybody should be able to bunt, especially guys that they put shifts on. But you do it, try to do it at the appropriate time. You're down by two, three runs, not leading by two. I mean, the Orioles want to add runs here. Right. As good as their bullpen's been, and, and it was terrific last night. Um, Chris Davis is about hitting home run. Now you're three runs down, and they put this shift on. We've seen Ortiz do it. We've seen a lot of uh, the guys that they put the shift on just, you know, bunt one. But you have to work on it. I mean, it has to be part of your game plan. Yesterday, the Orioles had early BP. And Ryan Flaherty was working on it because they have shifted on him a bit. They tried to time that slow curveball and he fouled it off. And if you're a guy like Ryan Flaherty is not playing every day and you know you're trying to keep your timing down and keep your swing, get, getting a bunt base hit here and there, that's a benefit. And he's not coming off a 53 home right. run and 138 RB a year. Two and two. Go to first and Jones diving back in. Mustakis, by the way, is on the second base side, but he's more up the middle. He's not in on the other side of the second baseman like the Orioles sometimes play it. And Escobar stays on the shortstop side over by his natural position. Down the right field line towards the corner. That's a base hit. Jones is going to get to third. Ioki plays it back in. And the Orioles have something cooking here. It is first and third, just one down. Yeah, the amazing thing is that Mustakis is playing maybe 12, 15 feet right of the, of the second base bag, and he's the guy that actually is going to take the throw on third from the right fielder. So he and Jones were running yeah, together. Exactly, and <laughs> I think Jones is a little faster. Well, there you go. Fastball up and in, and Chris Davis turns on it. Nice job of getting on top of that fast high heater. And here is Nelson Cruz, Mr. RBI. Perez out in front of the plate. He flashed the signals to the middle infielders just in case Davis takes off what he'll do. And the shading Cruz up the middle with Giavatella close to the back. Well, if you're Chris Davis, you're not thinking about stealing a base, but what you are thinking about, and this is where you're you know, your secondary leads and your primary leads are so important is that you're thinking about breaking up a double play and getting the Orioles another run with one out. Line drive right center field Dyson over he's got it Jones tags he's coming to the plate and there's a sack fly in an RBI and the Orioles have a three nothing lead. Yep. Well there you go. Adam Jones infield hit Chris Davis gets in the third and then a high slider. Uh, Jeremy Guthrie has been terrific with his breaking ball with maybe that exception he gets it up. You're looking for a ball you can hit in the air, and that's what Nelson Cruz does. So a two RBI game for Nelly. He's got 37 now. Clevenger swings through an off-speed pitch.
bouncer pass Wayne Kirby. When you get in games like this, I never recall how you always talk about the scoreboard math. So Tillman's pitching well. The Orioles have him three, which means he'd have to give up four. And he hasn't shown any signs of being that generous. So the Orioles with that add on run, textbook baseball. 0 oh 2 on Clevenger. Ground ball, Hosmer's got it. And he'll go to the bag unassisted. And that will end the inning. But the Orioles scratch out a run and strand one as Adam Jones gets on and comes around the score. The fourth, a heads up play by Machado, uh, the, the dive by Guthrie throws it away. And look at Manny Machado run. Legs feeling good. And a very questionable pitch. Guthrie thinks he gets the strikeout. He does it. First and third, high chopper over the head of Hosmer. And then uh, Clevenger showing extraordinary speed for a catcher, beats it out. Orioles get a couple of runs, take a 2 0 lead, add another run in the top of the sixth. Tillman uh, still on. Guthrie has pitched well tonight, but no run support. Uh, you can see the pitch counts for both of those. Geico 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Eric Cosmer leads off for Kansas City, and he'll take inside. Perez and Gordon to follow. Strike one and one. Yeah, it really has not thrown many changeups. That's the pitch he threw to Basic Castro in the first inning, uh, three run home run uh, against Houston in his last start. Up foul near the Oriole dugout. Manny gives it a look back in the crowd. But the pitch of favor tonight has been the, the fastball. And he's had a good one. Really made good pitches with it. When I asked him about the command he, he was great early on you, you look at his season and in his first four starts he had a 1.71 ERA and went two and one and then in his last four starts 6.75 going one and one and I asked him well how does it elude you and he just said that's baseball and well he, he was just, also injured and I don't think he wanted to use that as a crutch uh, because you're going out there every fifth day and there but well, I think what we're seeing tonight is somebody that's established his fastball. And I used to, uh, we, four of us won 21, uh, 20 games in 1971, and one of them was Pat Dobson. And this is what Dauber could do. He could get you out early on with his fastball, and then as you got into the middle innings, throw that kind of pitch. I mean, that's as good a curveball as you can possibly throw. Show him that you'll throw an occasional changeup. You can see 7%. That's the changeup. So he hasn't really used a lot, but they know he has it. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in the middle innings with the lead. That grip that we just saw in that replay, as Perez comes up, that looked like the Messina knuckle curve grip. Well, he it looked like his finger was uh, was up on top of. It. Well, that's because you get your finger off it. But I think the other thing he's done tonight is he's used his slider a little bit. You know, he's gotten Perez out on a couple of sliders, and this time he just is a little bit late on the fastball. 
And, and this is not somebody throwing uh, like Ventura throwing 94 to 99. This is somebody throwing 89, 92 every once in a while, using all his other pitches. So he has done a great job to this point of pitching, and that's why the scoreboard is what it is. So the hitters, because he's throwing everything for strikes, they don't know what to look for. Well, he's got, with the exception of the ground ball over the second base bag, he's gotten, he's done all the things you want to do. Uh, only the one walk, the Mistakis. He's gotten the first batter out in every inning except the first inning when you know, he hit it right over the over the uh, third base bag. And then they didn't do a very good job because he made a great pitch to Hosmer of moving the runner to third. Otherwise, they might have had a run in the first inning. So again, first guy's out using all his pitches. Big ballpark. And a fly ball to right. Flaherty actually backing out. Marquecas will call him off. <laughs> and puts on the brakes. And a three up, three down inning. We're through six in Kansas City. Tillman and the O's have the lead. the four game series but Norris will be on the mound he'll go against the left hander Danny Duffy our coverage on Masson 2 begins at 630 with those extra presented by Dodge and then game coverage at 7 o'clock we've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Those are the hard throwing lefty uh, Danny Duffy uh, so he's one and three not a lot of run support because they don't score a lot of runs coming off Tommy John surgery uh, the year before last, and then uh, Bud, better known as Buddy Norris, are looking for some run uh, run support. Uh, they're getting about three runs a game for him. Really has been pitching well, so he'll give him a chance to win tomorrow night. And uh, he of the of the Tiger, the Tory Hunter controversy. That's not what I heard that he likes Buddy. Is that your name for him, Buddy? <laughs> Call you Jimmy? <laughs> no, he will be. <laughs> <laughs> Broken bat popped up. And the Stockus waits for it. And he's got it for the out and one away. Well, some news uh, with the Orioles, Jim. Uh, the news that Heath Bell will be signing with the Orioles on a minor league contract. And you see, with the Rays this year, he was released after being designated for assignment one and one seven point two seven with 168 career saves. Uh, Rockabaco MassinSports.com got a text from Dan Duquette saying this is an interesting sign for Triple A. So again, organizational depth. They hope Bell can figure out his struggles, get Buck Showalter some more options for possibly down the road. And Johan Santana is pitching in the minor leagues in Florida, and he's trying to work his way back. So veterans for possible playoff push. You just never know. Yep. Uh, you just know what you, you have no idea what's going to happen to your pitching staff. Because the Rays, uh, they're still a little bit befuddled what's going on. Balfour really struggled. Came in with a 5 to 2 lead. A couple of walks, base hit. They brought in uh, Boxberger. He threw three home, three change ups to Mike Trapp. Hit the third one for a walk off home run. So everybody looking to, to get a little bit better. And then it might also be one of those contracts where, I mean, just imagine if you're Heath Bell, you want to get back into the game, you want to stay in the game, you have an, a chance to go to Triple A pitch. 
tell people you can pitch, whether it's the Orioles. So he may have a opt-out clause at some point if the Orioles don't call him up. Well, for somebody like that, it's important to keep pitching, and you can exactly. only keep pitching if you're on the team. So for him, this is a win-win. He stays in the division. He comes to a contending team, and he goes to AAA, where he's a phone call away. And if he's been paying attention, and he obviously has, the Orioles the past two weeks have been going back and forth to AAA Norfolk as Flaherty fouls it back. In fact, today, Brad Brock rejoined the team, and Evan Meek, there's Brad, back with the team. Evan Meek was designated for assignment to get him off the 25-man roster. However, he is on option waivers, and after he clears tomorrow, he can go back to Norfolk, and he'll still be on the 40-man, and he'll still be in the organization to be an option for down the road. Option waivers. Ryan fouls it off. Uh, apparently, according to uh, one of our friends in the front office, uh, there's kind of a gentleman's agreement in baseball that if you put a guy in option waivers, nobody claims him because if they do, then the next time you put it on, everybody in baseball is going to claim that guy. So Evan Meek uh, is almost certain to stay in the organization, and Brad Brock is back. So the last three days, they've made moves. Big bouncer to second, Giovatella. And two down. You had Gosman, then you had Meek, and now you have Brad Brock. Well, as promised earlier in the game, here's our AT&T's fan photo. Three O's fans hanging out, trying to entice. Oh, that's a selfie. I get it. Trying to entice JP Cakes, HOF22, to get on Twitter. <laughs> so two down. I'm going to race home and investigate doing that. Well, just how does, how, just so, do what I did. Have, have somebody help you. Well, I need a lot of help. But uh, <laughs> how, do, how do you actually? I mean, do you register? Do you I'll, I'll, I'll show you. You register and you yeah, go on. You just sign up and you hope that the name you want is available. Well, you know, two two fan fests to go. I'm sitting next to Tommy Hunter, and uh, he they talked to some of the Oriole people talked him into having a Twitter account. So he had like four or five hundred people following him. At the end of the four or five hours, that, and it was Tommy go. Boom, Tommy goes boom, boom, and I go, Tommy, you don't want to do that. They sit the center here. David Lowe likes that, mm -hmm. so the Orioles get some speed on. And I said, Tommy, that's you know, you don't want to be a pitcher. Tommy goes boom because that means you're throwing home runs. So he ch finally changed it. Right. I believe. I don't know what he is now. Well, the Orioles public relations office actually. They didn't talk me into it. They said it would be good because one thing you could do is you follow all the other teams. So if you, you know, we're going to the Pittsburgh, you can follow the Pirates beat writer or the Pirates account and you know, get some information. I do that on my iPad. Okay. Everybody has blogs. Now. Do, you have, do you have a blog? I don't mean everybody. I mean most everybody. <laughs> Alts of the Hoffer. <laughs> this would be a spot that you would think with two down, David Lowe might try. Guthrie, like Tillman, holds runners on well. Well, very quick to the plate, and you have a good throw and catch here. So it's all about with, with Nick up. He, if he also hits one off the gap, you're going to score because Lowe can really run. But this is all about can you think you can make it? What's the percentage? One and one is that one floats outside. Nick go for three tonight after three for four last night. You see a, a pitch count for Jeremy Guthrie at right at, a, at 100. Now David Lowe has his lead measured. Must have dived back in, but he gets there ahead of the throw. There has been no activity in the Kansas City bullpen all game. Left field for Alex Gordon. And he's got it for the out. So the two out single and a man left. Seventh inning stretch at Kauffman Stadium. The Orioles have a 3 0 lead.
could vote for your favorite Orioles up to 35 times with each valid email address for the chance to win a 2014 All-Star Game jersey autographed by the Orioles All-Stars. Plus, all fans who vote at least 25 times and select the O's as their favorite team receive a voucher good for $10 off any box seat or $5 off any reserve seat for one of the three games against the Angels July 29th through the 31st at Camden Yards. So get online, Orioles.com, vote orange today. There's Tillman. And he's pitching a gem here. Yeah, he's going to try to do exactly what he's done after the leadoff batter, which is every inning get the leadoff batter on. And the thing about Billy Butler, I, I, you know, obviously he's struggling and hitting 232, but he is a hit machine. Sooner or later, he's going to hit back. I mean, 298 lifetime batter. That's second all time, actually, third all time. I guess uh, Mike Sweeney is second at 299. And then. The Hall of Famer George Brett, who, by the way, happy birthday, George, turned 61 yesterday. Five. Butler fouls it back. You know who else's birthday is today? Buck Brittons. Oh, really? Yeah, Zach's older brother, and he has a base hit in an RBI for Norfolk. The other brother. On his birthday, yeah. Somehow I figure that guy's going to be in the big leagues this year. He's, he's Buck's kind of player. Well, his, yeah, and he can flat out hit. And his brother can hit a little bit for a pitcher. He's the only guy when they take batting practice that I don't cringe at. Right. Because he really knows what he's doing. I hit a home run down in Atlanta a couple of years ago. Same game beat out an infield hit. It was about 102. He didn't make it through six innings. He'd have a lead because he was exhausted. Broken about bouncing a third. Machado's got to concentrate. Plays the tough hop and he gets his man. Oh, yeah. that was a tough play with that bat flying at him. So all of a sudden, uh, here in the seventh inning, uh, three changeups of the five pitches thrown to Billy Butler. Here's the result. Right on the end of the bat, it just kind of implodes and then a little bobble. But you know who's running. Don't have to really hurry a whole lot. A really good pitch way out in front on the end of the bat. See how deep Manny Machado is playing where he should be and easily throws him out. You could see last night. He talked about the rhythm uh, in your interview. Turned a great double play. Went way to his left in the hole. Did a, a 180. Turned around and threw him out. Perfect throw. So, but the impressive thing for me is today after he laid the bunt down and Guthrie fell on and then over through first base. The uh, the turn at at first base. I mean, if you're wondering if his knees better, all the doubts went up right out the window. Want to know on Giovatella? Clevenger saying, "Oh, let's go." Got a little bit quick. A lot of times, uh, if you're tall like Chris and the ball gets up, maybe the stride is a little bit long, or you just kind of rush your delivery. Your arm couldn't catch up. The key for pitching is to be able to get your arm up and throw downhill. That's why they give you a 10-inch mount. And rhythm has a lot to do with that. That's just his 82nd pitch as he works here in the seventh inning. He is two outs away from giving the Orioles their 10th start on the year of at least seven innings. And the two one is low ball three. Tillman has two of the nine. Norris has two of the nine. Chen has two of the nine. And Miguel Gonzalez and Ubaldo Jimenez each have one start of at least seven innings. Look foul. Yeah, get me over fastball and Maria Vitello was waiting for him. So there's your pitch to hit. And the count goes full with one down. Right field towards the line. Marquecas over. He'll have a play. And Nick's got it for the out two down here in the seventh inning. Tillman in this game has had two innings in which he's had single digits in pitches. He had a seven pitch fourth and a nine pitch sixth. Tremendous efficiency here tonight. Plus, it's a cool night. Pitchers love that. 
Well, the leadoff double, the ground ball over the bag by Aoki, and then uh, he got out of that, and that's what you're talking about right there. The fifth inning. Uh, Walk Mustakas, who comes to the plate now with one out, and uh, then the base hit by Dyson, also to the opposite field, and then pitched out of trouble when he was able to get Aoki to hit a ball right back to him. Gets the glove, gets the call, one and one. What an education for Clevenger being able to catch pretty much every day with his staff. Tillman in search of his fourth win. Wei Yin Chen leads the Orioles with five wins. Last night after uh, the game, right before I did the post-game interview with Wei Yin, you know, you talk to him in English and he understands. I, I just don't think he's comfortable doing interviews in English, but I, I was teasing. I was like, oh, team leader and wins. And he had this big smile on his face like, hey, that's right, that's right. And a strike out of Moustakas ends the seventh. So Tillman has another three up, three down inning. We're heading to the eighth with the O's in front. A Miller light. Orioles uh, left 18 games, 11 times, three runs or less. So you'll take runs any way you can get them. Right there after the bunt by Machado. Nelly yeah. Cruz does what he's been doing all year long, driving in runs, just slices a one hopper over the uh, drawn in infield. Hosmer playing in, and uh, the Orioles get their second run, and then he'll drive in another run. So Guthrie really pitching well, but he trails three to nothing. They really coming into this game, Jim. They had uh, scored 5.68 runs when Jeremy is on the mound. That has not been the case to this point. 101 pitches. Here's Manny Machado leading off, and he'll take a strike. Manny, on single, perfectly placed. But from stock is back, and he got it just far enough past Guthrie. And that got the Orioles going. That was a leadoff bunt single. Guthrie threw it past Hosmer. Manny hustled the second. He went to third on a wild pitch. Yeah, that, yeah that's game awareness. They're struggling for runs. It's a nothing nothing game. They give you the bunt. It wasn't a great bunt, and the, other than the fact because he bunted it kind of hard, but it was very effective because uh, it was a very difficult play for Guthrie. I and mean, then he fell on it, then had to rush the throw for a, really a double. Towards the middle, Escobar spins and throws, and he got him. Oh, what a play by Escobar to Rob Machado. Well, he ends up in right center field. And Manny just tipped his cap to him. Now Manny knows what uh, he does to other hitters. I mean, look at this play, and look at the accuracy on that throw. 
And he's the other side of second base. Right on the money. <laughs> yeah, he there you go. Well, that's what the game's about. You, you really, you know, you want to win. You want to, if you're a pitcher, you want to get the guy out. I mean, when I we talked about George Brett turning 61, he was a tough out. But you always admire his ability to to do what he was able to do. And defensively, doesn't get much better than that. And Escobar, as he's matured, has become so consistent at shortstop. Jones to center field. Dyson, a lot of room out there. And two away in the Oriole eighth. Fans, you can follow every Orioles game all season long. MLB.com at bat, right there in your favorite mobile phone or tablet. At bat brings you baseball wherever you are with live look ins, instant replays, scores, stats, highlights. Audio free MLB.tv game of the day. You get classic games and much more. So download the award winning MLB.com app bat. Go to the App Store or visit Orioles.com. Chris Davis fouls it off the other way. And all of a sudden, Jeremy goes right back to 94. 90 91, the last couple of innings. Davis will get your attention when you're flinging the baseball. And Guthrie this year, his high for a pitch count is 111. That was in his first start of the year. And he's at 109 right now. There has not been one reliever who has been getting loose in the Royals bullpen all night. They're just huddled up trying to stay warm out there. And two and one on Davis. Two outs, none on here in the eighth. Deep right field. That ball is going to go. Davis gets in the one and hits it out. So the Orioles add on a run. It's a 4 nothing game, and there is number three for Chris. So for Chris Davis, Jim, his first home run since April 23rd, and he crushed it. Yeah, you bring the ball down, uh, you get into the eighth inning. I mean, the velocity was still good. That ball didn't get in, didn't get away, and he was waiting. You know, he wasn't like he was a one-season wonder. I mean, here before 53, hit 33 home runs. Uh, here is Nelson Cruz. And he fouls it off the right side. Let's get a look at our Lexus of Towson drive of the game. Drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson. The area's number one Lexus dealer. Come see why at LexusofTowson.com. Yeah, you can see the target away, and uh, he runs the ball over the inside part of the play. Does not get it above the belt. And it's out of here. Line drive and a base hit to left field for Cruz. Yeah, well, the bullpen will get up. You can see in the background somebody getting up and loosening up. Uh, well, there you go. 105. 77 is the major league average. And Jeremy Guthrie. Uh, when you walk into this ballpark, you want to, if you can, Dave Island's going to come out and have a talk with him. This is really just to kind of give the bullpen a, uh, a little bit of a chance to get loose. There's Casey Coleman, who was just called up today. I think that is uh, Casey, Casey Coleman. Casey Coleman, who just got called up today. And they got a couple of Coleman's out there. Louis Coleman from LSU pitched last night. So Cruz has a two hit game. His 14th multi hit game on the year. Levenger bounces it wide to first. Steve 0 for 3, but a, a key at bat in the fourth inning. First and third and one down the bouncer to second he legged it out. So he wasn't doubled up that allowed the Orioles to score a second run in that inning. Now off the bat it really appeared they were going to turn two. But he really got a good jump ran hard. Base running in this game has been fantastic. You know, the base hit by. Chris Davis in the six with Jones was on at first. And he easily made it to third so he could score on a sack fly. Well, this is a huge ballpark, and you really have to hit the ball as uh, Cruz did last night, or Chris did tonight to hit home runs. 
but it is easier to get the first and thirds than Camden Yards. So Giovatella gets Clevenger. Chris Davis, though, gets in the one. Hits number three on the year. A no doubt about it shot for a 4 nothing Orioles lead. presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Uh, Chris Davis gives the Orioles an add on run. For his third home run on the year. Just a matter of time Jim before he breaks out again it, just like what Manny went through getting the timing and. You know, he had a couple of hits the other day, and even though he hasn't had a, a lot of base hits since coming off the disabled list, he does have two hits tonight. So a multi-hit game, that's a seventh. First home run since April 23rd, and a key man in the middle of this lineup. I, I don't think he's going to have a problem hitting home runs. And there are going to be matchups, as there is whether you're pitching or you're hitting, where maybe the other person has an advantage. But how many guys can hit that little rectangle up and in, and that's... Pretty much what you have to do to get Chris out. When you look at guys that Manny talked about it in his interview with you, Chris Davis will talk about it. About two weeks into spring training, he said, I'm ready for the season because I'm getting my foot down, I'm ready to hit, and I feel like I'm comfortable. I mean, watch what you even Escobar. Hands go back, foot gets down. And when you're hitting well, you have a rhythm to do that. And when you do that, I mean just think about the dynamics of hitting. Chris Tillman, and he's very deceptive, and he's pitched great tonight. He had about four tenths of a second when his foot, that his left foot, gets down to see what the pitch is, decide whether it's going to be a curveball, fastball, or changeup, and then figure out how I'm going to hit it. And you got a guy moving the ball around. Some guys are easier to see than others, but it's such a rhythm. Bob Watson, uh, the scout dinner, terrific, uh, you know, former uh, what American League president, the general manager for the Yankees. He said it's very simple. When the pitcher's foot gets down, you better get yours down. Machado's going to charge and he won't be able to make the play. That'll be an infield hit for Escobar leading off in the eighth. Yeah, the only way to make that play because of the speed is to come in and you try to get to it so you can uh, be able to get it before it goes underneath the glove. Good curveball. And here's the short hop. And it hits right on the edge of the grass and stays down. Can't get the leather on. So Escobar picks up his eighth infield hit of the year and he extends the hitting streak to five in a row and here's Dyson. The way Ned Yost has his lineup tonight with Escobar eighth Dyson ninth and Aoki leading off three consecutive hitters that can hurt you with their speed as well. If you get on right. Dyson singles last at bat. Here, he used to pitch against those great Oakland clubs. He 
the A's had won the World Championship 72 3 and 4, and they had, you know, Joe Rudy and Reggie and Sal Bando and Rick Monday and, you know, all these guys that could hit the ball out of the ballpark, Darren Johnson, but the guys that on a daily basis to beat you were Camp and Harris and Bill North. Because they would get on, they'd steal base, they manufacture runs and make it easier for the, the heavy lifters, the home run guys, to, to do their thing. And a strike at the knees, good pitch. The one and two on Dyson. Yeah, all you, with a four nothing lead here in the uh, with nobody out in the eighth, uh, everybody in the infield because they know Dyson's speed. It's about making sure you at least get one out. You know, if you can get the lead runner, fine. You know, keep him out of scoring position, but you need. I mean, you're starting to count the outs. You need six of them and maintain this four nothing lead. And a little low, and he doesn't chase two and two. But Tillman, this is just his second career start in this ballpark, and I'm sure he has forgotten about the first. Well, yeah, I did that game. It's an afternoon game. May 5th, 2011, and three and two thirds innings, eight runs on 10 hits. There was a day where he couldn't get his fastball over, couldn't get the curveball over, but he did get the stuff over. They were ready. And then a chopper foul, he just got a piece. And that's why his. ERA against the Royals in his career is so high, it's because that one came he allowed eight runs. Tillman, though, winning pitcher, he's 35 and 27 in his career. This is his 93rd major league start. Popped him up. Clevenger calls. And he's got it for the out and one down. Yeah, so. another perfect pitch, Jim. I mean, you know, you throw him curveballs, throw him change ups at the end of the day. Tonight, he's used all those pitches. It's been about fastball command. Perfect pitch, belt high, right at the fist. Uh, Chris Tillman, you know, the, the trade that Andy McPhail made with the Mariners, Adam Jones and Tillman came in that trade for Bedard along with three others, but. You really have to give a lot of credit to the Orioles scouts that worked for Andy at the time and may, many still may be here working for Dan Duquevich. Chris Tillman was an A ball when they made that trade. So that that's a potential deal. Yeah, it was a high pick. He was a second round pick, but he was still an A ball. And when you're an A ball, you still don't know. I mean, they might make it. They might not. So to me, that's just real good organizational. Collaborating there with good scouting and then Andy McPhail making the big trade. You know, we, Eric Bedard kind of forced that trade because he said he wasn't going to sign here and talking about the Orioles and you know, remarkably talented pitcher. And that's why they got as many quality players as they did. And they got George Cheryl who was what an all star right. next yeah. year. Not to mention their, their center fielder. Old lover Adam Jones. There's a strike. I mean, that's why somewhere down the road, you know, if trades are made, contenders, they're looking for players they know can help them now. The teams that are trading those players, they want players to help in the future. Well, when the Orioles were in that position, <laughs> they got two stars back in that deal for a guy who was eventually going to exit. Time it's three and one on Aoki. Well, they're looking for base runners, and Memorial still nobody up in their bullpen. So you know the, uh, the Royals want to get action. They want to get Tillman out of here. How that'll happen if it does remains to be seen. Showing bunt. Yeah, I don't on like three that play. And one. Wow, and he takes a strike. Well, he was just taking it, and you know, the minute you fake a bunt, the the umpire loses the frame of reference if your strike zone. Well, how would he know whether it's a strike or not? You're moving, running all over the place. You're a lot better off just kind of ducking it or trying to do that. It was a nice job of framing there by Clevenger. Three and two on Aoki. Bouncer to second. Clarity to Hardy. Back to first and in time for a double play to end the inning. What a feed by Flaherty to Hardy and the strong throw gets Tillman out of it. We'll head to the ninth for nothing O's.
on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by visitannapolis.org. Find it here. Four nothing O's as we go to the ninth. And Jeremy Guthrie, Jim, now out of the game after eight innings. Yeah, really acquits himself well. Uh, the Orioles trying to beat him for the first time. Came in 2-0 and with a 189 lifetime ERA. Didn't really get hit hard with the exception of the home run by Chris Davis. So he gives them a chance to win, but uh, to this point they haven't scored any runs. And, then and this pitching change should be quick. Just like a Jiffy Lube signature service oil change. At Jiffy Lube, they get you in, they get you out. And you never need an appointment. And here is Casey Coleman making his debut for Kansas City. Yeah, first uh, Casey that ever appear in a game for the Kansas City Royals. Joseph Casey Coleman, his grandfather Joe was an American League All Star in 1948, and then uh, pitched against his dad. Uh, his dad pitched for the well, he pitched for a lot of teams, but he pitched in the All Star team in Washington. He was 142 and 135 with a very low earned run average, 3.70. Pitched uh, almost 27 or 2,600 innings in the major leagues. Joe Coleman, Jr. He was with the Cubs and released, then they signed him for AAA, and here he is in the big leagues. Ball one to J.J. Hardy, Flaherty, and Lowe are due to follow. His dad was uh, probably about 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, he appears to be a little shorter than that. All three. He last pitched five days ago for AAA Omaha. Already one out of three on the night. He takes a strike, three and two. Yeah, he was ready to go down to first base. Yeah, I think I misspoke. His father still is six three. <laughs> <laughs> Not a was. <laughs> he might have shrunk a little bit, as we all have. As we. Ooh, Escobar in between hop plays it cleanly to get Hardy one away. Well, there's no one getting loose in the Oriole bullpen, so possibly Chris Tillman a shot to get a complete game here. What the pitch count at 107. With 2 3 4 coming up. Yeah, Dave Wallace was talking to him between innings, the Oriole pitching coach, and probably asked him how he feels, how the, uh, the groin that's been bothering him feels. Obviously, it must feel pretty good the way he's pitched tonight. Been superb. Flaherty hitless on the night. Tillman has one complete game in his career. He takes outside. He has had it all working tonight. Clarity to right field. Aoki came in, goes back, and reaches up and makes the catch. Yeah, very athletic play. Hardest ball to, to, to make a play on. A lot of times, as an outfielder, the ball hit right at you. I don't know if it's going to hook. You don't know if it's going to knuckle. Made it look easy. I said bat for Ryan Flaherty. I mean nothing to show for it, but it is about as well as you can. As did David Lowe his last time up. He belted one and Aoki ran that one down just short of the wall. David Lowe takes high one and oh. Kansas City in the ninth has Hosmer, Perez, and Gordon, so two, three, and four coming up. The 
way they used to do it is you will. As Chris Tillman will go out to the mound they will get somebody. Or two people. Used to be just your closer or maybe. You get people up in the bullpen. Oh don't hit him. Don't hit him. Come on David. And a big bouncer to first Hosmer will go to the bag. And he gets there ahead of the hustling low. So three up three down. Go the O's Tillman going out looking to complete it in Kansas City. Well, he caught enough of those. He knows what to do. And uh, if 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 Rick Dempsey was catching, he would come out. He'd say, "Okay, let's let's just do it like we did back back in the first. One pitch at a time, one hitter at a time. Try to get through the ninth inning." Well, there you go. 122, the the season high, and tonight certainly uh, able to, even though it will be the fourth time through the order. But the the other thing about pitching in the ninth inning is the you know you got to be there and. He did that in the his second start in, in against the Tigers, uh, where they beat Verlander three to one. But the bottom line is, it really is just one pitch at a time. You still keep using all your pitches, and you try to get ahead. First pitch off the glove of Flaherty, and there's a base hit. So Kansas City needs base runners, and they get the leadoff man on here in the ninth. Yeah, the fact that they hadn't done that since the the leadoff double. Zach Britton now getting loose just in case. They got his first major league save last night. 12 pitches. And Buck on the phone to the bullpen. To Dom Cheney. Well, the way Britton is pitching, uh, it really doesn't matter if you're right handed or left handed. We, Gordon on deck, a lefty. This may be uh, his last batter if he doesn't get him out. And a strike taken by Perez. So a different approach. The first two hitters. Hosmer was looking to swing in the first pitch, and Perez took a strike. Ground ball towards the middle. Hardy has a play. Looks at the Flaherty back to first and not in time. I'll tell you what, Jim, the footwork of Ryan Flaherty there, that was not an easy play and he made it. Well, you can also hear the thundering steps of Eric Hodgman. I mean, nice play by Hardy. They know you got to get the lead runner with a 4 0 lead. And you know, it is such a dangerous position. Uh, second baseman, shortstops will tell you uh, the, uh, the well being of second baseman is usually directly uh, proportionate to the throw. JJ gives him one. He's able to catch it. You can hear the footsteps coming. And then able to make the pivot and at least get the throw off. Buck telling Chris Davis play behind the runner, it looks like. They don't expect Perez to run with the lefty up. He wants the 
better angle for a ground ball. Yeah, just take away the hole. So here is Alex Gordon. And a strike. Gordon is hitless on the night, including a strikeout. Tillman has only struck out three, but that's okay. He's pitching, encouraging them to put it in play for this tremendous defense behind him. And the big ballpark. Well, following tonight's game, Buck Showalter will head back to Texas. His daughter, Allie, there she is, a uh, happy pop it, walking her down the aisle last February at her wedding. Well, she's going to graduate SMU Law School tomorrow. So Buck and Angela will be there with their family to celebrate that. And then he'll rejoin the team here on Sunday. Well, congratulations, Stally. And two on Gordon. Bounce the first right where Buck had Davis go. First to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. With Tillman covering up. How about that? He had him play behind him. <laughs> Gordon hit it right to him. Uh, the, the key right here, they're going to see a great angle here. Just make sure your throw clears the runner. And you can see the angle he gets. And the bang bang throw. Gordon easily across the bag to keep the game alive with Butler from Butler coming up. And just what you want Chris Tillman doing with a sore groin, stretching. <laughs> it's just an instinct. There are 113 pitches for Chris. He's an out away from the shutout. And Billy Butler's up. He's over three. Tillman's high pitch count came in to start at Fenway Park on the 18th of April. He lasted only five innings and threw 122 pitches. That was one of those 26 foul ball games. Got to play one and one. Well, what he's done today is to be able to pitch inside. And if you go back first inning, all the outs are in the air. Second inning, two of them. Third inning, three of them. Fourth inning, two of them. Ground balls in the fifth. Strikeout and two fly balls to six. You're getting the, the message that he's thrown a lot of balls and he stayed out of the middle of the plate. Right there, a little slider he's used tonight. More than he has in his last couple of games. Now just think, this game started with a leadoff double, a ground ball right over the uh, third base bag. It looked like they may score you early. Cosmer didn't run. Move him over. He got Perez and Gordon out, and now he just has to get Butler out some way here in the ninth. And hit it to Mr. Reliable, J.J. Hardy to second, and there it is, Chris Tillman, his first career shutout, and the Orioles' first complete game shutout since September 6th of last year, when Scott Feldman did it against the White Sox. For Tillman, it's his second career complete game. The other came in a loss, an eight inning complete game in Toronto. What a job by Tillman. So the Orioles win it by the final of 4 0, and Tillman 